Hello and welcome to a brand new series, the How Do I series, where we get back to the basics on how you at home can use the many, many virtual resources that Ticonderoga has available to you right now, today, this moment, on your computer and your phone and however you access the internet. My name is Miranda Peters. I'm the Vice President of Collections and Digital Production. And I wanted to take a moment um, to talk about our online database. Uh, if you've watched any of the videos that mention Ticonderoga's impressive and vast collections, undoubtedly you have heard about the collections management database, Ticonderoga Collections Online. And that's great, we keep on talking about it, but we've never really broken down how to use it, how to search in the database, how to go through records, how to find it is what you are looking for. And so that's what we are hoping to do today in this video as part of the How Do I series. This is the first of a series. There will be multiple videos uh, released each Thursday at one o'clock this month in September of 2020. Uh, but let's jump straight in. So first of all, how do you access? the online database, you may ask. There are a couple of ways you can do it. One way is to go to Fort Ticonderoga's website. Just type in F-O-R-T-T-I-C-O-N-D-E-R-O-G-A dot O-R-G. And here we are, we're at the website. And there are two ways from the website that you can access the online database. If you go to learn and explore, and then click down on collections, which makes sense. It's the online collections database. You will come up with this page and you can click on the link, search the collections. So let's click on that. And from here, there are multiple ways to search through the collections uh, or, or to see the collections, engage with the collections. We have our popular collection speed dating series uh, that, that's available on YouTube and Facebook. We have the card catalog for, for the manuscript collection at the museum and some of the bound archival materials. But today we're going to focus on the online collections database. So I'm going to click on search the collections here. And voila, we are here, Ticonderoga Online Collections. Now I said there were a couple of ways you can access the database. So let's go to another one. I'm going back to the main Fort Ticonderoga website. Again, I'm going to learn and explore. And this time I'm clicking on Center for Digital History. And through here, if you scroll down, you can go to the Ticonderoga Online Collections Database, which will again reroute you to that collections page. And here we are again, but wait, there's a third way. You don't have to go to the main Fort Ticonderoga website if you don't want to. You can just type into your browser, uh, fortticonderoga.pastperfectonline.com. And you can see it here at the top of your browser, at the top of this video. Uh, so F-O-R-T-T-I-C-O-N-D-E-R-O-G-A dot P-A-S-T P-E-R-F-E-C-T-O-N-L-I-N-E dot -E com. So there are a number of ways you can access the database, but now that we're in the database, I want to show you a few things. So this is the main landing page. Um, this is where you can access all of the options of the online database. Uh, and I'll take a moment to say that the online database has the most up-to-date and current information that museum staff, the curator, the collections management staff uh, have access to every day at the site, at the museum. And so we are pushing out records directly to you. Uh, maybe not every single field in a record, and we'll break down what a record is in just a moment, but if, a, if there's a description for the record, which there always is, it has the most up-to-date information um, that we have available at that time. But let's just take a moment to look at this page. Uh, so you can see there are a number of options on the left hand side here, home, keyword search, advanced search, random images, archives, photos, and objects. And perhaps this is your first time coming to the online database. So you may not know where to start. Uh, you may not have a specific research project in mind. You may not know anything about Ticonderoga's collections. And you're, you just want to see what we have. The best way to go about that, I like at least, 
is the random images link. So I will click on random images. And what this does is this pulls from across the over 5,000 records that we have available on Ticonderoga Online Collections database. And it gives you a random sampling. It gives you a random image sampling. So you can see there are some, uh, some photographic prints, some archeological pieces, a sword, um, powder horn. So let's click on one. Let's see, I am in the mood to look at a powder horn. So what I did is I just clicked on, on, that, uh, on that image and this came up. So I can get a, a bigger view of the photo um, for the record that uh, I'm interested in maybe seeing. So let's say, okay, this is an interesting powder horn, but you know what, I, I don't want to see powder horns right now. So I will X out of that. I'm really interested in this sword. So I will click on this sword. Yeah, I want to know more about this piece, this sword. So what I can do at the bottom of the pop-up image, it says view catalog record. If you click on that, that brings you directly to the record for that object. And I've mentioned record a few times. So each, each object in the museum's collection, um, in the care of the, and, and stewardship of the museum has information attached to it. That information includes where did the museum get this piece? Was it a purchase? Was it a donation? Um, is it on loan? Uh, what do we know about this piece from an historical context? You know, what, what is this piece? What is the description? When is this piece from? Uh, so all of that information is included in a record and a selection from that information is pushed to the online collections database. Uh, so here you can see a perfect example of, of the different components of an online record. We've got the object name, uh, which is a sword, an other name, usually other name has a more specific name for an object. In this case, it's a British basket hilted cavalry back sword. The object ID, which is really important. The object ID is, uh, is the official number for that piece as we are tracking it in the museum's collection. So all of the information we have attached to this sword will also have the same object ID, the 2009 number. The collection, this is from the Grafton H and Barbara W. Cook collection. So this piece is part of a larger series, is part of a larger collection. Here is the year range from 1750 to 1760, and then a description of what the piece is. We have some maker information, where it was made, the material it is made from, and then a credit line um, that again connects to the collection it is a part of. So let's go back to search results. So I want to go back to that uh, random sampling from the online database. So that's one way that you can just jump straight into the database and you can click on random images as many times as you would like um, just to get a sense for what is in the collection. Here is a fantastic gorget. Um, we've got an ax, print, buttons, bricks, pistols. Let's do another random image search. And you can see, you can click it lots of different times and, uh, and potentially this is the way you can discover a new object. But let's say, you are coming to the online database with a really specific question in your mind or a research objective. You want to find out something about something very specific. So we can do that a number of ways. I'm going to go to keyword search. I really like using the keyword search. If you use Google, uh, it's, it's the same idea where you can Google or you can keyword search a specific term or word uh, or phrase and see if there are any returns, see if we have any objects that connect to it. There's a couple pieces of advice for the keyword search. I like using very few words. Um, I find that with this database, if you fill in every possible word, um, you know, lots and lots of information in this keyword search uh, field, oftentimes you're reducing the chance of finding something. So I like to keep it really big picture and then you can continue to refine um, based on what you're looking for. So let's say you are really interested in Ethan Allen and you want to research Ethan Allen. I personally would just start with typing in Allen. Um, and let's see if there are any returns. There are some returns, um, but I'm seeing that there are also some returns of records for items that aren't connected to Ethan Allen, for example, this, uh, this canteen 
is connected to Noah Allen. Um, and I, I didn't want to see anything on Noah Allen. I wanted to see just objects connected to Ethan Allen. So I can either search through this and find the, the objects that connect to Ethan Allen, or I can go up here and type Ethan Allen. Now, usually if you are looking for a phrase um, or a sequence of words in that particular order, I will use quotation marks. So here I'm going to add quotation marks around this phrase. And they even give you a search hint um, that says the same thing. To search by phrase, wrap your criteria in quotes. Um, and the example is find me. And so in this case, we're going to look for Ethan Allen. So let's see, we had 49 uh, records for just Allen. For Ethan Allen, and I hit search, 42. So this should have weeded out that canteen that was connected to Noah Allen. And it has, that's fantastic. So let's see here. I'm going to click on, you can either click on the word um, glass comma magnifying, so there's magnifying glass, or you can click on the image. I'll click on the image and it'll bring you to the same place. Now let's see. We have a magnifying glass in a dark brown tortoise shell case believed to have been owned by Ethan Allen and his wife, Frances Fanny Allen. Uh, and the glass pivots out of the case on a center side pin. Well, that's interesting, but I, I really wish those photos are so small. I want to see them bigger. You can make them bigger. You can make them bigger by clicking directly on the image. And if you see on the sides here, there are little arrows you can click on those arrows to navigate through the photos that are attached to this record. So you've got um, the top of the case, the bottom of the case, and then here is that magnifying glass out on the side. That's really neat. Okay, I'm going to click the X now. Um, but that's, that's a way that you can make the image larger. And if I didn't want to see this first image, I can just click on the third image. I just wanted to see this image. That is fine. So I'll go ahead and X out and return to the search results. And so you can do that for a number of records. Uh, Gunflint, what is this? Reportedly used at the capture of Fort Ticonderoga by Ethan Allen um, and subsequently given to Isaac Rice, a Revolutionary War soldier. Interesting, and this one has some kind of a, oh, it's an old museum label on the back of it, probably from the early 20th century, the early 1900s. And that's interesting. We'll go back to the search results. So that's one way that if you were looking for just specific objects, you could find that. But now let's say you had a really specific question that you wanted to ask of the database. I'm going to go to the advanced search. So here we are on the advanced search page. There's a lot on this page, but don't get overwhelmed. Uh, we'll, we'll do this together. We'll get through this together. There are a few things that I find very helpful with the advanced search page um, and, and things that I use consistently. One is exhibit status. Let's say you saw an object on display at Fort Ticonderoga and you really want to know more about that object. You can do that by searching through objects that are on exhibit. You have to do it in a roundabout way. So I'll give you a quick shortcut, a, a quick life hack for searching through Ticonderoga's exhibits. Uh, what you can do, if you go back to Fort Ticonderoga's website, I am going to click under the experience Museum Exhibitions. And here I have a list of the names, the titles of the different exhibits that are on display at Fort Ticonderoga right now or that are coming up soon. So let's say I saw an object in Pottery, Pork and Pigeon, Fort Ticonderoga's 18th century menu that I was really excited about and I want to know more, or I want to see some pictures, or I want to use a picture in a presentation that I'm, I'm creating. One way you can do that is just pull a word from the title. So in this case, I'm going to use the word pottery from that title and I will go to exhibit status and I will type out pottery and let's search. And that's going to search across all of the exhibits that have the word pottery in them. Let's give it a second to think. Here we go. 98 objects from that exhibit. Uh, and so from, from here, I can click on an object that I'm interested in, including this tea bowl. That's really pretty. I'm going to click on this photo because I really like it. Uh, 
from here, I want to show you a couple of other things. Let's say I was really excited about this piece and I thought, you know what, you know who else would love this object? My mom. She loves pottery. So I'm going to email this to a friend. I can click on this link up here, email to a friend with a little envelope, and then type in the email address of the person I want to send it to, my own email address, and either keep this same subject, uh, Fort Ticonderoga Museum, or I could change it to something else, and then a message like, mom, you'll really like this, check it out, uh, and then you can send. That's one way to do it. Let's say I think that so many of my friends would love this object. I want to share it to as many people as I can. Over here on the side, there are some different ways to do that. I'll start at the bottom here. If I just click on share, it gives me a whole bunch of options. Gmail, Messenger, Pinterest. Those are all ways that I can share this. I'm going to click out down here at the bottom. I can email, that's another way that you can email it, add it to Pinterest, tweet it out, or share it on Facebook. And so I would go in and share it to my Facebook page. That's a way you can do it. I'll be doing another video at some point later this month where I will talk about how to uh, responsibly share images, share resources from museum collections in school presentations, in uh, research, in papers, online. So we'll really dig into that then. So I won't spend too much more time on that. But let's say I was looking at this record and I am a specialist in tea bowls. I'm not really, but for the sake of this example, I'm a specialist in tea bowls and I see an issue with this. And I, I, I think that there is some information that needs to be updated. One of the things that I love about the collections database and collections management in general is that it's, a, it's not static. It's constantly evolving. We're constantly adding new information as we are learning new information. The database reflects that. The database is a living database. We want to make sure that it has the most up-to-date research, the most up-to-date information. Or if there is a typo or an inaccuracy, we want to, to be aware of that so we can bring it back to the museum staff and review, uh, review that message or review that claim. One way that you can get in touch with us is by clicking Send Us Feedback and you fill out all of the information here, um, and that comes directly to me or to one of the other members on the museum staff team. Uh, and we'll know exactly which record this is referencing. Um, so when you send a message attached to a record, we'll know which record you're talking about. So it makes it a little bit easier to use. So let's go back to advanced search. So we talked about exhibits and how to see which exhibits there are on right now collection. Let's say there's a collection that I'm really interested in. I want to see all of the objects that are a part of that collection. So I'm really interested in seeing the pavilion collection. So I'll click pavilion and collection. And again, you don't have to use lots of words. You can just use one word at a time. And then I will see all of the objects connected to the pavilion collection um, and then go through and find what I want to find. Um, like this is a painting that I really, really like. It's on display at the Thompson Pell Research Center. So if you are ever doing research with the museum collection, uh, this is an object that you can see, or you can see it here on the online database. Um, but it's a beautiful piece. So let's go back. So we've talked about collections, exhibits. Uh, and then I think for right now, we're going to leave, leave this at that. Um, there's a lot more you can do with the advanced search feature, but I really find that for day-to-day -day use, I am going to keyword searches, random image searches, or I'm just kind of following through on the archives, photos, and objects modules. So let's click on those. If I just click on archives, let's say I want to see just every archival document that is available on Ticonderoga Online Collections, um, I can do that. I can just click on archives. And this will show me the five returns. I promise you there is a lot more coming with the archival collections. Uh, we are actively working to find support to make the archives more accessible so we can get them to you. Uh, but that is, is in the process. Photos, there are more photos, uh, 456 objects that are connected to um, the photograph collection, including daguerreotypes, early, early 20th century uh, glass plate negatives, 
um, some really interesting pieces. So it's, I, I do encourage you to just take some time and explore and discover. And then the last module are objects. And you can see 4,607 object records. So all of the records in the online collections database are in one of these three categories. Um, and they're constantly being updated. This is something that even, I think yesterday, more than a thousand records were updated. This is something that every week, every month, new records are coming to the online collections database. So if you haven't seen uh, what you're looking for yet, check again, but also contact us. We constantly field research inquiries and we are happy to get your messages. We're happy to get your emails and phone calls. Um, and so let me show you how to do that. So one way is like we spoke about before, if you click on a specific record, you can send us feedback. That's one way to get a hold of me. It will come. It will come to me or to one of my colleagues. Another way, at the bottom of this page, you can click on the email address info at fortachondroga.org. That goes to our general uh, mailbox. But someone receives that message, realizes this is a collections question, and will send it on to me. Another way is let's go back to the main website. You can search. You can search for me specifically. If you go to the bottom of the website, there is the link about, through about, let's meet the staff. And here, here I am, Miranda Peters, and my email is right here. So you can click on that, email me, ask a question, and you can say, I'm not finding what I want to find on the online collections database. Um, and that's gonna happen. We don't have everything online yet. And so uh, if, you, if you get in touch with me, or with the curator, Matthew Kegel, we can help you with uh, your research inquiries for objects that maybe aren't on the online database yet, or that are coming, but they're not there yet, or that we don't have, but we know where that resource might be available and might be located. So in a nutshell, that is the Ticonderoga Online Collections Database. Again, I encourage you to explore. I encourage you to ask questions, to discover. And, uh, and to use the random image search, because even if you know what you're looking for, it's always fun to see, to see some new things that maybe you didn't know you wanted to see before. So anyway, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this, the first of the how-to series, and stay tuned for future how-to series on how to um, navigate the resources that are available right now to you for free, anywhere you have access to the internet. So with that, thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you for supporting Fort Ticonderoga. If it's not for you, um, we couldn't be doing the kind of work that we're doing to get these collections out to you to, to meet our mission of preservation and education. So thank you.